Yeah, no, no, we're not, we're not gonna, all right. We are not learning that one because nobody wants to hear it. Instead, I'm gonna show you a polyrhythm that people actually do wanna hear, and it's actually super musical, and it shows up in a whole bunch of songs that you've heard. I actually use this polyrhythm all the time to create interesting and unique tom grooves, and it's actually a part of so many grooves that you've already heard and maybe already played and you just haven't realized it. So this is one of those really cool concrete things that you can learn today. You can do this, let's get started. The four over three polyrhythm is probably the most common polyrhythm you ever hear in like normal popular music, uh, especially in four four time. So that's our normal time signature where we're counting to four. Most songs are in four four. And the four over three polyrhythm fits really well into that context. I'll show you some examples here in a minute. The cool thing is, guess what? It's not hard to play, not that hard to play. And there's a couple of ways you can learn and a couple of approaches. And I'm gonna teach those exact approaches to you so that you'll be doing this uh, as soon as you go sit down at your kit and implement these steps. Basically what we're gonna do is play this four over three polyrhythm between our right hand on the floor tom and our right foot on the kick. I'll just show you what it sounds like. That's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna play it again. Listen to the kick drum. Imagine the kick drum is playing the quarter notes. So we're gonna be counting to three. So the kick drum is the three, the floor tom is the four. I'm gonna play it really quiet so you can hear me yelling on top of it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now this time I'm gonna play the same thing, but listen to the floor tom. Try counting to four with me. One, two, And so you can hear how for every four notes on the floor tom, we've got three notes down here. It goes either way, every three notes here, four notes here. So that's the relationship. We're putting three notes and four notes into the same amount of space, playing them on top of each other. But because this is a four on three and not like a 12 on 11 or a 45 on 44, there's a very clear relationship between these and it's very musical. So I'm just gonna play through some musical examples that use this rhythm. Whether or not it's a direct four on three polyrhythm or not, you're gonna hear this type of pattern, this type of rhythm. So here we go. So pretty much all those examples had some form of that relationship. They had something like that in them. And what you might have noticed if you're a, uh, if you're a Jeff Percaro fan and you're familiar with the Rosanna groove, that was one of the ones I played there, that kick drum pattern is basically the Bo Diddley beat. And there's a video of Jeff Percaro breaking this down. I'll link it in the description. And he talks about how he stole that kick drum part from Bo Diddley. So that's a song and an artist from 1958, I think. A long time ago, it was a rhythm, and it was very similar to that. Basically, it was boom, 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 boom. So that was the original Bo Diddley rhythm, and basically, if we shift it around just a tad bit and go from and instead play. Then at that point, we've created this four over three rhythm. So anyways, that shows up all the time. That shows up in Rosanna, it shows up in, in Bo Diddley. And so that's nothing new. And it's interesting that it's basically a four over three. It's basically a polyrhythm. Also, if you play in church a lot, and if you're familiar with worship music and that whole genre, that kind of tom pattern shows up in worship songs all the time. Like there are so many worship songs that have like in the verse, maybe the pattern is something like,
it's just a big rock tom kind of feel, a simple tom rock and roll. And it shows up in worship songs, it shows up in a lot of other pop and rock songs also. And so it's a really great way to spice up a tom groove with that pattern. So how do we learn this? How can we break this down further? How can we master this ourselves? Because it's really cool and this is really useful. You definitely want to learn it. And there's really two ways as far as learning the basic four over three polyrhythm that can kind of become the Bo Diddley, that can become syncopation on top of a timekeeping foot. Well, the first way is to literally count it out. Like if the kick drum is the quarter note. One, two, three, four, one, e and a, two, e and a, three, e and a, four, one, a, and e, four. We can literally count it out like that. One, e and a, two, e and a, three, e and a, four, e and a, one, e and a, two, e and a, three, e and a, four. Basically a dotted eighth rhythm for those of you who know music theory and notation a little bit because we're having, we're placing a note here every three sixteenths. Bum, 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 bum. So you can learn it that way, and then we can shift that, that second to last note from the E of three over to the and of three to create the bow diddly. One E and a two E and a three and four. One E and a two E and a three and four. Instead of one E and a two E and a three E four. Hopefully you can hear that difference there. That's kind of the difference between a straight up four over three versus the Bo Diddley rhythm, which is very similar. And both of those kind of work interchangeably a lot of times. So you can learn it that way, or just to get a, a good handle on the polyrhythm, you could learn the rhythm of the polyrhythm. You can hear that rhythm. There's a whole bunch of mnemonics out there you can find online. Uh, they usually involve like, potatoes and bananas and tomatoes and like foods and eating things and passing things. I don't know how that all started, but those just work really well. You could say, eat the brown potato, slice the green banana, pass the red tomato. You can see that I literally have these <laughs> written out here so that I remember them. I don't think I ever learned this based on a mnemonic. I just kind of learned that pattern and felt the rhythm. But you could totally do that. You can find a mnemonic that works for you. Eat the brown potato, eat the brown potato. Bum. Learn that feel, and so you could go from there. Just learn that pattern, how that feels, and then start applying that. Boom. And then when we apply that to a 4-4 groove, where it ends on beat four. You can definitely hear the difference there. Now, if all of this seems a little bit wishy-washy, confusing, maybe uh, if, you're not, if, if you're not familiar with counting or you're not familiar with notation and these rhythms, it might seem a little bit confusing, but that's okay because I've got a PDF guide below you can grab, totally free, that's literally the lesson notes from today. So lesson notes and all this is written out in notation. So if you are a visual learner, that's gonna help. And if you're new to notation, you're still gonna be able to catch on to this and it's gonna make sense and it's gonna help you learn it. You can do this, you are totally capable of getting a four over three down. It's a polyrhythm. Don't let the word polyrhythm make it sound harder than it is. You can do this, go practice it. It's all outlined in the PDF below. So go download, download, do, download, go download that PDF for free. That's definitely gonna help you out. So thanks for watching everyone. You can do this, you can accomplish this, go practice it, get going right now. Let's stay non-glamorous together. Pass the brown tomato, pass the red tomato, brown potato, pass the red tomato, eat the green potato.